All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead, open those up today. We are in the book of 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 11 through 12. And uh, I remember many years ago, um, I was at a conference, a, uh, a youth uh, kind of retreat uh, deal. We were camping. It was it was great, you know. And uh, there was all these different Calvary uh, churches there. And uh, one of the youth pastors uh, from another church, he was an older man, and and he just saw me, and he saw the call on my life, and he, he just kind of breathed on that and says, man, you're called to the ministry. And I'll never forget, he told me, read First Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus over and over again. And I've done that. I've, I read it again and again. And this is one of the most powerful verses in the Bible here in First Timothy uh, chapter 6. It's Paul, right, the apostle. He'd done it. He wasn't just a, the word elder doesn't mean older, does it? That's not true. Um, you know, we, we all here uh, live very short lives. Uh, you know, if you live to 100 years old, it, it's a very small fraction of history. Uh, the question is how much, it's not how much quantity of life you've had, it's the quality of life. Um, uh, if you have lived the majority of your life in the pursuit of the world and in, in uh, carnality and hedonism to please yourself, uh, you really don't have much to share um, if you've lived a life that is unto the Lord, like what Paul is going to talk about with Timothy here. And that is something to talk about. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, we pick it up, verse 11, it says, But you, O man of God, and if you're a woman listening, it's for you too, but you, O woman of God, flee these things. So Paul now says to Timothy, you need to flee. What does that mean? It means you need to run for your life. You need to get away from these things. Uh, you're going to see some of these things. The world says, oh, stop being so judgmental. This doesn't hurt you. They will only bless you. Paul says, no, it won't, Timothy. They don't know what they're talking about. These are the things that are destroying men's souls. These are the things that are destroying women's hearts. Flee these things. And he says, but you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness. Pursue these things. Flee fornication, flee sexual moralities, flee pride, flee the love of money, flee selfish ambition, but pursue what? Righteousness. Pursue rocking, walking rightly with the Lord. It matters, man. It matters if you're walking rightly with the Lord today or if you're not. It matters. Pursue righteousness, he says, and pursue godliness. Pursue the desire to be more like God, to be more like him. You and I will never be God. Like John the Baptist says, you are not the Christ, but we should want to be more like him. We should be asking the Lord, Father, today, make me more like you, right? Make us more like the Lord. Godliness, faith, faith, peace, right? To believe God, to choose to reject fear and to choose to walk by faith. Paul says, pursue faith, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, Hebrews 11 says, but in the evidence of things not yet seen. Pursue faith. Pursue love, agape. Ask God for the gift of love. Ask him to give you the spiritual gift of love. Patience. I know you're going, oh, I wish that wasn't in this list. Paul says, Timothy, pursue to learn to be patient, right? You, you can't overstep the Lord, Timothy, as God is working on someone and you might be done with them, but God says, I'm not done with them. Pursue patience and pursue gentleness. You know, we're living in a very violent age. I just watched on the news, uh, like a, a, a mob of people going through Chicago, hurting people and destroying property. And it's wild to watch. It's wild to hear what politicians have to say. Kids will be kids. No, that's, that's not what my daughter Sayla does. This isn't equivalent to taking some ice cream out of the refrigerator here, right? This is not the same. But God says, in light of all that, I still want you to pursue gentleness, right? I want you to be more like me, a meek and lowly of heart. Paul says, Timothy, pursue gentleness. And he says this, fight the good fight of faith. He doesn't say fight the fight that the politics wants us to fight or fight the fight of the church religion fight the fight of this or that he says fight the good fight it's of faith 
continue to preach the gospel, continue to teach the word, continue to gather my people together, continue to go into all the world and make disciples. Paul says, this is what matters to God. This is what matters to me. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Paul says, finish what you started, Timothy, right? Stay the course, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on what the reason why Jesus saved you. And the same for you today, fight the good fight of faith, leave behind, flee wickedness, pursue the things of the Lord. You won't be disappointed. Father, bless your people. May they stay the course in the things of you today. In Jesus' name, I pray for them now. Amen.